Welcome to another episode of the Grow Your Occupancy podcast. I'm Julie Podowitz, CEO and founder, and today I welcome Mona Hilton to the show. Mona, welcome. Why, thank you so much, Julie. It's so great to see you again, spend time with you. Oh, Mona, Mona and I have known each other for many years. It's wonderful to see you again. Mona is the CEO and founder of Advantage Anywhere. Tell us a little bit about Advantage Anywhere. Yeah, again, it's great to see you, Julie. I feel like every time we get together, we have so much fun and we solve the world problem. So who knows what we're going to solve today, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, so, another yeah. podcast. that's another podcast, but... <laughs> I was looking back, I think we met in 2010. It's been that long. So I've known you for what, you know? How many? 14? A long time, yeah. Well, you are always, uh, I consider a, certainly a, a valued colleague, but more importantly, a, a dear friend, someone who I've always admired, Thank someone you. I can call and bounce stuff off of. And, you Thank know, you, you're, you've got a huge heart and that's what I love most about you. Oh, thank you, Julie. The feelings are mutual. So yeah, Advantage Anywhere is a company that I founded um, to really address the issues that we kept hearing in senior living. A backstory is we had been working in residential development. We did sales and marketing automation for them. And as things turned out, to make a very long story short, we were actually asked to help out the senior living industry. And you were one of the first people that we spoke to as far as getting research about, is there really a need and what is that like? So over the last 14 years, we have evolved a lot in that we've really dug into what the needs of senior living providers, managers, uh, what they're dealing with, what the real problems are, and how we can take advantage of technology, if you will, to solve a lot of those issues. So that's my passion, as you can tell. Um, and I think a lot of times that's where you and I brainstorm about different ideas. You know, I love, first of all, uh, women in leadership and, and uh, women-owned business and tech, women-owned tech business, that are, we're, you know, you're in the minority and you've been you're running a very successful tech business now for, for many, many years. If you want to learn more about her and all her background, please reach out to her. But I wanted to ask you, uh, it's now we're heading into March, I can't believe it, of 2024. And you had your year reviews, I'm sure, with your clients. I'd like to hear from you what uh, kind of that year in review. And then based on that, what have your clients uh, been telling you as far as their kind of their goals or objectives for initiatives for 2024? Yeah, you're right, Julie. This is like my favorite time of the year because it's an opportunity for me personally to engage with our clients. And I, I have what, the, what I call executive planning sessions where we meet one-on-one -on -one and we talk about just what you mentioned, which are what are your initiatives for this year? What are the challenges that you're up against? And what are some of the things that you want to accomplish? So um, there have been some common themes that have come up over and over again. Um, and if you'd like, I can share some of the, the common ones. Okay. So one of the things that comes up every single time without fail is that leads are expensive. Leads are getting more and more expensive and they are looking for ways to generate more of their own leads instead of relying on third-party leads. And even more than that, regardless of where the lead comes from, because they're all very valuable, as you know, leads are precious how to optimize those leads and how to get uh, the most bang for the buck from those leads. Another thing that they're dealing with leads specifically is how can they qualify leads? Because they're getting a lot of hits, if you will. And I, I say this, I've said this before, but Google can tell you how many hits you got. What they can't tell you is how good are they and what happened to them. So they're looking for how do we qualify our leads without investing a ton of man hours unnecessarily only to find out they're not really good leads. So um, another thing as it relates to leads is how do we revive dormant leads? Those are leads that have gone silent, they're unresponsive, they just haven't you know, raised their hand if you will. So how do we revive leads? So we've been working on a lot of re what we call revival campaigns to get those, um, those leads to raise their hands. 
also in regards to leads um, is a, a lot of them that I spoke to this month and January are working on brand new websites. And I, I love that because they're shifting from websites that are electronic brochures, you know, just a pretty page to how do we turn that into a lead generation magnet? And there's been a lot of talk of that over the years, but people are actually starting to take that seriously. Oh, there's a lot to unpack here. We're probably going to need two parts. So let's start with the first one. No, I'm going to start with the last one. Websites <laughs> going from, like you said, a pretty brochure, virtual brochure to a website that will produce, produce for you, produce what? Quality leads. Our and qualified leads. Qualified. Ideally self-qualified leads. Self-qualified. So, like qualified. so I always say contact us pages don't work. Not, not that there's anything wrong with them, but contact us pages is just a, a catch-all for tire kickers, for people who are looking for a job, for somebody who's trying to find out how mom is doing at their community, not necessarily potentially sales qualified leads. So there's got to be other ways to do that, to your point. Okay, so um, I liked what you said that self-qualifying. What is, do you... So when you're putting website, and that's something that you all do, right? You build. Yeah, websites. we either work with people who are have a website developer, or we can do them ourselves. Um, either way, we're we're after the same results, which is to help them get leads that they can generate from their own website. Okay. Online leads. So, what are your recommendations? I'll say top three. Your website must, or your recommendations are what? And let's assume, Mona. Let's assume that it's. Well, you know, it's it's simple to you know simple to read, and the, it has quality photos. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that. Mm -hmm. What are the three things you really recommend? Mm -hmm. And font size. We'll assume that too. Yes. Yes. So, with an eye really specifically on generating leads, there's a lot of things that we can do. So, what we do know is that people are getting traffic, and I'm going to use that term. I'm assuming your audience knows what that is. So, they're getting visitors to the website, but they're bouncing. And they're going off to third parties, which are, of course, selling them back to them um, at, at an expensive rate. So what we want to do is we want to give people, uh, prospects, if you will, plenty of places to stick, places to engage with them. Uh, one thing that we have been using a lot, our self-assessment, uh, just a form that's a magnet. So are you um, are you considering senior living? Is senior living right for you? And a very short questionnaire, you know, again, I, we have some ideas about that. So we always suggest that never be more than five or seven questions, that it's always on one page because of the three click rule that says every click that you ask a visitor to make to go to a next page, you lose 30% of your audience. So we try to keep it on one page, keep it short, provide a very big carrot or an incentive to fill it out, whether that's in the form of content or even in merch. Merch is a great thing for seniors. You know this, they love merch. Come by and get a free whatever, uh, you know, a swag bag or whatever that is. Anyway, and then ask questions that are very strategic. So questions that one, of course, give salespeople uh, information that they're going to need during the sales process, but also to Allow the prospect to think through questions that might otherwise be uncomfortable that you'd sweep under the carpet. How many meals are you eating alone every day? What's your social life compared to what it was a year ago? Those kinds of questions. Again, these self-assessments are really designed to be targeted. So whether you're dealing with independent living, which is what I just described, or you're dealing with a family member who's looking on behalf of mom, you know, who fell at two o'clock in the morning and uh, the daughter is up looking for alter options and runs across your website. So your website should have plenty of places for them to stick. They should be quality content. There should be um, a reason for them to give you their content, their information. So they're not just gonna give it to you for grins and giggles, give them an incentive to do that. So I don't know if that was three, Julie, but it's oh, the no, best you, way to do all this. There's three. The there's three. So I wrote this down. With for every click you require from your audience, you lose 30% of them. 
Every click that requires that can go to a different page, you lose 30% of your audience. Oh. That's just that. Yeah. Oh. So you have to be mindful of that when you're planning these things. Those are, this is all really great, doable information, doable mm -hmm. meaning. Okay, I can work with this. Practical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, practical. So form fills, what I also hear like contact us and it's a form fill is in your opinion, not a good use of space or time. It's not necessarily the most effective way to generate leads. And then beyond that, if, if I could just kind of spring off of that, the other thing that most senior living providers do, and no, no, no shame, no guilt, it's just what it is, um, is they, they'll fill out something and they'll get an immediate generic thank you. And that's it. End of story. That, that doesn't work. <clears throat> what we recommend is launching a personalized nurture campaign. So again, if we go back to the example of mom uh, falls at two o'clock in the morning, the daughter's online looking for a solution. She comes across your website. You've got this self-assessment or whatever that is. They fill it out, get whatever. That there is a speed to lead, which you already know, I'm preaching to the choir, but the speed to lead says is a five minute role. If you contact your web leads, your web inquiries within five minutes of them reaching out to you, you're a hundred times more likely to uh, engage them and sell to them than if you wait just 30 minutes. So scenario, bomb falls two o'clock in the morning. How can you possibly personally respond to them? And yet that's so critical. So this is where technology slash automation slash AI, depending on the audience, becomes an extension of your salespeople and allows you to respond instantly and personally instead of a, hey, thank you. It's, hi, Julie, thank you. I noticed you click through. I'll be in touch shortly. In the meantime, here's this and this and this that you might enjoy. So you are engaging that prospect or adult child, whatever that, whoever that person is, instantly, personally, and um, you're allowing them to feel special. Now your competition's not doing that. So that gives you a leg up right there. Also, sorry, I don't I don't want to run off of this, but I, I also believe that people have become bland blind. So generic messages, they know it's automation. So being able to personalize those messages, uh, what I especially love is incorporating a video in that very first response. And we do that all the time. If you filled out anything from us, you're most likely to get a video right away that says, hi, blah, 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 whatever that is. So not making it generic, hey, friend, that kind of thing, but very personal. Because what happens is if you send out too many generic emails or marketing automation and you're focused on quantity instead of quality, they become bland blind and they don't see them. And then when you do have something you want them to see, it's likely to get over overlooked because they've been bombarded with all these other things. A lot of nuggets in there. Let's talk video. You said to add video to your messaging. Tell, talk to me about vid the use of video. I have story after story after story of how video can engage. So when I say video, let me kind of give uh, set the stage for that. So we call it V-mail. It's built into Advantage Anywhere. So when a lead <clears throat> comes through, you can include that video in the automation, like I mentioned. You can send a special, like uh, this is done all the time. So we do tours just like you do tours. And instantly, as soon as we're done with that tour, I create a, hi, Julie, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Da, da, da. It's very personal. And I can't tell you how many times people who have gone silent or gone dormant will respond to that because it's a video message. And people like that versus just bland emails. So video is probably, if there's one secret to getting people to engage with you, I'd say use video. What else have the clients been telling you? Yeah, there have been so many cool things that they're working on. So a couple of other things that have come up over and over again. So we have several clients who are very blessed with healthy wait lists. So they've got a lot of wait listers on there. And that, it sounds like a great thing. And they always start off by saying, I know I shouldn't complain, but 
that presents different challenges. So how do you keep your waitlisters engaged? How do you keep them excited? How do you stay in touch with them? So obviously automation is the perfect way use of, of how to do that. So we've been working with them to build automation, to nurture them, to keep them engaged, to keep them excited, um, those kinds of things. Um, something that's come up probably more in the last year or two years than I've heard ever before is how do we use automation to recruit staff and caregivers? So it's not just about leads anymore. It's also about referral source and it's also about staff, employees, caregivers, those kinds of things. So we've been taking a lot of the automation tools, think of them as engines, and using them to attract and capture and engage and nurture prospective employees as well. So that's something that we hadn't run across up until about maybe 18 months ago, maybe two years tops. So that's another one. And then the final one, which is really a kind of a catch-all, which is uh, they're telling us, you know, our costs for everything are going up. Every, running senior living, uh, senior living community has never been more expensive. Labor is going up, costs are going up, everything, food, everything. So how do we use technology to streamline our processes, get leaner, reduce our costs, uh, consolidate as much as we can, and automate everything that we can that's possible so that our existing team can do more with less, with less, what we call less friction um, and less manual work on their behalf. So finding ways to leverage, I'm not gonna say take advantage of, although I'm tempted, leverage technology and automation to reduce the costs and streamline processes and get lean. Um, can you give an example for of of that? So the, everything costs so much, right? So what do you, what do you what cost are you potentially eliminating or reducing? Okay, what you do? Yeah, that's a really really good question. So the obvious one that comes to mind is, and I say this with no, no disrespect to anyone. I get it. We're all kind of in the same boat. So people say, okay, well, I need to get. Uh, things in place, tools and places for our marketing and for our sales. So they go out and usually they start with a CRM. Okay, so we need to get a CRM. All right, now that we have a CRM, we need to get some sort of a product for email marketing. And then, oh, we need to also get marketing automation. And when I use the term marketing uh, automation, I'm not just talking about marketing automation. I'm talking about lead gen automation. So funnels, if you've heard that term before. Um, and then, oh, we need to incorporate video marketing. And oh, we need um, some sort of analytics tool to analyze the data in our systems. And then they end up with all these silos and then they've got spreadsheets and then they've got sticky notes and then they've got paper forms, as you all know. And everything ends up in all these different silos that don't talk to each other. So the next natural progression is let's bolt them together. And they try to bolt things together to try to get them to talk to each other because their people are spending a lot of time copying data out of here and cop like, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, uh, they do an email blast uh, using a well-known product. Um, and then they've got to put all that data back into their CRM and who opened it and who was sent what and that kind of thing. So they bolt them all together. And then at the end of the day, they end up with a, what I lovingly call a Frankenstein. <laughs> Something that doesn't look good, doesn't work good, breaks easily. And then they realize how much each of those silos are costing them, both in tangible money and in soft money, which is labor costs, basically, to do these things a different way. So streamlining all those um, has been a big uh, priority for a lot of them. Makes sense. Makes sense. And uh, grow your occupancy is in our they're three and a half or an inch into three and a half years. And congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. So proud of that. Uh, what great okay. team we have. But I find, you know, as you grow, as we grow, pun intended, I guess, is we're, I, I'm looking at this, 
similar problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because what we needed, what I needed as a sole operator, or maybe have one person on the team and, and is very different from now uh, with the you know, big full team and, and, you know, COO, thank, thank the Lord. <laughs> uh, but I, I was just taking a note when you were talking like, oh, let me think about, do we really need this now? Because we have this now. And it look in the work a day world is, oh, and then you, you might not even realize I don't, I don't realize, and I think I'm pretty aware, but you know, I don't realize, wait, wait, what this would actually do this, or do you need this, if you have the, you know, all of that. So um, having and those costs can add up very quickly. I often say we are drowning in tools and starving for results. Yes. Oh, wow. So it's really important, like you said, to eyes wide open, take a look at it and go, do we really need this? Is there a way that we can consolidate? How do we do that? So that's very wise. And not worrying about how do I solve it? Just, just say this, this is a problem I'm having and go to an expert, go to someone who spends their entire day and their career in this, like you, in this part of the business. You know, you mentioned earlier, Mona said something like, you know, one person can't do it all. One company can't do it all. It take, take, uh, manual emails, you know, take what can be automated out of the hands of, we'll say a sales director or community relations director and let them focus on what can't be replaced. What's going to move right. the most is the, is the relationship, content, right? Right. You know, doing the home visits and the visit, the community mm -hmm. visits and planning and mm -hmm. connecting and letting them talk through their mm -hmm. hesitations and all the, you know, the many, many, many times they need to talk, right? Mm -hmm. And have automation take care. It's a, it's the same concept uh -huh. as, okay, your business, you do this really, really well. It's important that even if you're not doing that, you know what needs to be done and you've got that experience behind you, which uh, just makes it more effective. So you mentioned... Oh, a wait list real quick. And I, yeah. I was going to piggyback on that. You a wait list, like you said, it's like a good, a good thing to have, right? Oh gosh. And we'd love to have a wait list. And I would just like to add a word of caution because I've seen loads and loads of wait lists that aren't really wait lists. They're people who uh, have given a deposit or told they want to be put on a wait list who aren't ready right now. Mm -hmm. And everyone has a different that definition of when to go on a wait list, but just a word of caution in my humble opinion. I mean, if you're in a, a startup, you're in a lease up, totally get it. But you've got 20 apartments open. You shouldn't be waitlisting for one of those apartments. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. But that's what be these behemoth wait lists. And then to your point, we should be nurturing our wait list for sure. And I understand there are certain circumstances in which, you know, wait list is created, but otherwise you've got to nurture, you're nurturing a warm, lead base, mm -hmm. which is, a, yeah, which is a good thing to do. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I just caution anyone listening to this to think that, uh, oh, wow, why would you need to nurture a wait list? That's why, mm -hmm. you know, we have people on the wait list that aren't ready right now. Mm -hmm. call them, so. I would also, and, and again, it, it, every situation is different. So kind of what I'm sharing is general uh, suggestions, recommendations, but when, when we talk about nurturing, the nurturing is not just a one way pounding on them, pounding the beaches. It's also providing an opportunity for them to raise their hand with every nurture, a call to action, a CTA as they call it, or whatever that is. So that at any point, there's an opportunity for them to talk back to you, to provide you feedback, to raise their hand, to express interest. So nurturing is not just a bombardment, it's a conversation two way. Mona, thank you so much for joining me at Advantage Anywhere is a, well, if you could summarize, and I'm sure you need to, you have to do this. It's hard for me to, because you are, it's, it, it's more than just, what would you summarize Advantage Anywhere in one sentence? What, what is it? Oh, that's not a fair question. But so 
I would, I generally, when people say, what is it? It's really marketing and sales automation for senior living. The longer answer is, if you were to smash together CRM and lead funnels and marketing automation and email marketing, digital marketing, social marketing, uh, video marketing, uh, property, inventory management, like what's available, where people are at, move-ins, move-outs, occupancy, and all the data, the spreadsheets that you need into one single login, that's essentially what Advantage Anywhere does. Sorry, that was longer than you asked for, but it's hard. I think it was a long, it was one sentence. I think you- A think very run-on right. sentence. <laughs> and Mona, if someone listening to this would like to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Uh, I'd be happy to talk to anyone. Uh, our website is advantageanywhere.com. My personal email is mona at advantageanywhere.com. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to anyone and uh, see if there's anything we can do. We do provide free consulting just to see if there's an opportunity that we can share ideas that we've done with other clients that might be of help to them. So happy to do that. I enjoy that. It's one of my favorite things about my job, actually. If you don't know where you should, if you want to reach out to me as well, I'm happy to uh, give you a referral or pass you on. Mona Hilton, CEO and founder of Advantage Anywhere. Thanks again for joining the Grow Your Occupancy podcast. I'm Julie Potowitz. If you'd like to learn more about Grow Your Occupancy, you can find us on our website. You found us on our podcast. Please like and share so others can benefit from conversations and information such like Mona shared today. Make it a great day. I'll talk to you on the next show. Thank you, Julie. Bye-bye. Bye, Mona.